In this video, I will walk through how to use the Composite Thin-Walled Pressure Vessel Analysis Tool inside of Helios Composite Pro to analyze a composite wound pressure vessel. So what I have on the screen already filled out is a, is a laminate composed of IM7977-2, a carbon epoxy uh, ply material. I've named, named my laminate demo laminate for this example, and it is roughly a 40-20-40 laminate, meaning that 40% of the plies are in the zero de degree direction, which for a pressure vessel is oriented in the axial direction of the pressure vessel. And then 20% of my plies are plus minus 45 degree plies, and then 40% of my plies are 90 degree plies, which which in the case of a pressure vessel, again, is the hoop wound direction or the, the layers that are round or wound around the circumference of the pressure vessel. So to open our tool, we'll go to the tube beam menu and select thin wall pressure vessel. And then just like most of our simple structural analysis tools inside Composite Pro, we first get the laminate tab where we can create a laminate from scratch. Or since we already have our demo laminate created, I'll simply open that. And then on the tube geometry tab, um, this is similar throughout all the tube beam uh, utility tools in that uh, for a pressure vessel, we're only limited to a circular cross section. And then for a radius, I will specify a radius of 10 inches. And then that's all we have to fill out on the tube geometry tab. And on the calculate tab, we get four options at the top to define our loading and the geometry of our pressure vessel. So first off, we see we can analyze a closed end or an open end pressure vessel. Uh, for this example, I'll choose open end. And then we have the option of entering a pressure. Um, this pressure is defined in the conventional sense in that a positive pressure is a positive internal pressure of the pressure vessel. And so it'll cause the pressure vessel to expand, whereas a negative pressure would be like an external pressure on the pressure vessel causing the vessel to collapse. So I will specify an internal pressure of 500 PSI. And then we also have the option of actually loading the pressure vessel. Um, in this case, a positive number would, would place the pressure vessel in tension, and a negative value would place the pressure vessel in compression in the axial direction. And now we have our standard failure criterion for composite materials. Um, because we're analyzing an open end with internal pressure only, uh, the max stress failure criteria is, is adequate. Um, I would like to highlight though if conducting an analysis where it's a closed in pressure vessel or where axial loads are involved and you have more a, of a biaxially loaded composite ply, then the max stress criterion probably isn't the best choice in this case. You might want to move to a quadratic failure criterion such as Psi Wu or Psi Hill to better capture that that interaction between loads in two directions. And then once we have all of our input values filled out, we click on the calculate button. And that will activate three buttons on the right hand side here. The tabulate button, if we click, will generate a, a data table of stresses, strains, and failure information for our composite plies. So I can run through this real quick. Uh, what we see is we have three points, uh, 1B, 1M, and 1T. This means this is the bottom, middle, and top location of our first ply, which happens to lie at the, the inside radius of, of, our, of our composite pressure vessel. And then remember we have 20 plies here. So we have 20 plies in our data table, all with bottom, middle, and top points. And then looking at the values we have available, we have the radial location of our uh, point that we're sampling uh, stress and strain data at. We have how much this point's moved. Now this is really important for determining the, the dilation of your composite pressure vessel. Um, because this is thin wall theory, you can see that the change in radius is uniform or almost uniform with some numerical difference uh, for all points in the composite pressure vessel. 
um, but what, what this is the change in radius so when the pressure vessels press pressurized to 500 psi this is how much the point will move in the radial direction and so for for determining the dilation of your composite pressure pressure vessel that's the change in diameter of the pressure vessel you would just take uh, the, you know double the delta radius value and then moving along we have the strain in the axial hoop and shear directions for each of our composite points and then also the axial hoop and shear stresses for all of our points and then finally um, what I find one of the most interesting points is we have the failure index and failure mode for each of our composite layers so what we can see here is we have a failure index of 0.52 um, so that, that means we're uh, roughly 52 percent of the way um, to failure uh, in this individual composite ply and so some quick back of the envelope calculation says that well we might be able to bump up this internal pressure to 1000 before we start seeing some failure and uh, we'll go ahead and do that and see what happens so we'll change our internal pressure to 1000 and we'll click on calculate and then we can click on the tabulate button again and now you'll see some yellow highlighted plies in our in our data table and the yellow highlighted plies are the plies that have failed so there are any plies that have a failure index value above one and you can see here that our one three eight plies so one three eight they're all zero degree plies so they're all our axial direction plies that are starting to fail first and then so this is where uh, we can start playing around with the laminate to to get a laminate that will uh, satisfy the internal pressure uh, requirements without having a failure and so to do that is very simple we can go to our laminate tab and because our zero degree plies are failing first it might be a logical choice to go well if our zero degree plies are failing first let's just add a few more in so let's do that. Let's add a few more uh, zero degree, degree plies in. So we can click on the uh, the twentieth ply, and then I can just hit the repeat button, and I'll do it four times for four additional zero degree plies. Now we can go back to our calculate button or calculate tab. Click on the calculate button, and then click on tabulate. And we see we still have uh, plies that are highlighted in yellow. And uh, if you remember from before, our failure index was about 1.04, so we really didn't change the failure index much by adding four additional zero degree plies. So we can go back to our laminate tab and go, well, we, you know, we can add, you know, maybe 10 more zero degree plies, or let's just try adding an, ex an additional hoop, an additional 90 degree ply, and see if that'll help out with our with our failure index. So we can delete our our four additional zero degree plies click on a 90 degree ply click on repeat and that's just an additional 90 degree ply on the outside go back to our calculate tab click on calculate and then tabulate and there we ha we have it we uh, we have changed our failure index to below one so just by adding one additional 90 degree ply one additional hoop ply we've uh, made the structure be able to resist the pressure enough so that the failure index in our zero to replies has a uh, drop below one. And then just to run through some of the other features available, um, we can take all of the data in our data table and export it to Excel. Um, this will be useful for sorting through data. What you cannot do in Composite Pro is sort uh, columns by uh, a max or minimum value. So you can do that in Excel very easily by exporting this to Excel. And then also we have the ability to plot these stresses and strain in the hoop axial or shear direction. So I can plot my hoop stresses by selecting the hoop radial button and plot stress. And then I get a plot of all these stresses in at all my composite points. So there's three points, bottom, middle, top for each ply for all 21 plies. And you can see here that my highest stresses occur in my plies 2, 4. If we go back to our laminate tab, we can see, as expected, those are our hoop wound plies. We expect in a uh, open end internal pressurized uh, composite vessel to have the, the hoop plies take the majority of the load. 
And so that is just a quick run through of how the thin wall pressure vessel analysis tool works in Helios Composite Pro. If you have any further questions about how Helios Composite Pro works, please contact us at info at firehole.com.